Hello, it's Philip Taylor from Richmond Green Chambers. I'm talking about this book, Benjamin Sale of Goods. Now that's a picture of it, it's a heavy book, and within the frame of I, which I have for this uh, review, it's going to be difficult for me to hold it and show it to you. But it's very much um, part of the uh, Sweet and Maxwell Common Law Library, and it's an excellent book. I've given it the title on the internet for the book reviews and in the Barrister magazine and the various other places it's been placed. I've said Benjamin makes yet another good sale. And I say that for a number of reasons. This book has been around for a long time. It's now in the seventh edition. But if you look at the list of the names of the above editors who are actually included in this work, it sums up the book. It's a brilliantly conceived piece of work and the ultimate statement on the law of sale of goods as I see it. What I particularly liked about this book, which is something that Sweden Maxwell had decided to do, is to tell us a little bit about Mr. Benjamin, which I will get on to in a moment. Um, it's not long ago, of course, that this book was completely reformatted in 1974. And so this edition, the seventh, is actually the key authority in the field at the moment. Obviously you have the supplementary updates and so forth, which are very helpful. But I thought it'd be interesting to look in a little bit more at Judah uh, Philip Benjamin, who obviously is the original writer, and the Common Law Library produced some interesting facts about him. He was born in 1811 in the West Indies, and his life makes fascinating reading, and it's a welcome addition, in my view, as a human touch to the heavier prose of this particular volume. His family moved to Charleston, and he attended Yale College, as it was then called, and without completing his degree, uh, he was called to the bar in America and entered the legal profession in New Orleans in December 1832. It's a far cry from when I was teaching in, in America, which was actually um, the end of the last century. Then he began writing. Ten years later, he served in the state legislature, and a decade later, he was elected to the Senate and re-elected in 1857. Um, the problem was he chose the wrong side uh, during the Civil War, and it was... Uh, actually, he was Jefferson Davis's uh, Attorney General, being known as the Brains of the Confederacy. Not a particularly uh, great title to have with, with subsequent events. Um, when Lee surrendered, of course, uh, with his life in danger, Benjamin escaped and came to England, virtually penniless, and he ended up at Lincoln's Inn, my inn. And he published something called contract of sale in 1868 and uh, other works to go with it and it then became known as Benjamin on sale. He took silk in 1872, became a bencher in 1875 and retired eight years later because he went actually to go and live in Paris and he died in May 1884. So that gives you a picture of the man. I think it's quite important because then then you get some idea from what he started out with, what we end up to go uh, get today, because he's a remarkable man, and we have actually now eight current experts, guided by uh, Professor Guest as the general editor. And the team, in my view, as I say, have provided the final word about selling goods in England and Wales and overseas for the lawyer. And it's to the credit, I think, of Sweet and Maxwell that they maintain the highest standards here again uh, with the contributions from such an excellent team because this is a substantive statement of law. Let's make no mistake about it. We have the foremost thinkers involved in early 21st century um, publications now. So I'm sure, reflecting on the original work which Benjamin produced. I'm sure be delighted to see it flourishing in the United Kingdom, um, as obviously a lot of changes have taken place since 1974 alone. There are recent changes which are listed. I'm not going to go into much detail with them, um, but there's quite a lot for use at the independent bar. 
Um, it's a thorough and updated text. Um, obviously, it supports most of the relevant law we have today on sale of goods. It gives the comprehensive explanation of the law of sale of goods. It also looks at the implications of things like e-commerce. And apart from dealing with, obviously, the standard bread and butter issues such as unfair contact terms, um, remedies, latest developments, and things like the regulations that we've now got to deal with. Um, it obviously um, gives a great examination of new case law. So as I say, to, to sum up, the text offers comprehensive high-level analyses of case law and legislation covering both domestic and overseas sale of goods. And as I've indicated, no other country, in my view, in the world produces anything like the Common Law Library. I know it's expensive, but it's the best. Benjamin, I think, is in the top three, with Chitty and probably Clark and Linsel on tort. We all have our own favourites, but um, I'm sure you can see that the depth of analysis in the new Benjamin, um, which obviously is provided with the relevant new cases and uh, statute, shows the practitioner just how the principles have been applied and it gives guidance, excellent guidance in my view, on how to tackle any issues that might arise. So Judah, ben be um, Judah Philip Benjamin I think would be delighted to see that the finest and the highest traditions of English jurisprudence are being maintained well into the 21st century. So you've made a sale with me. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.